Welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live stream with live peoples. Morning to everybody, afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. I'm working in Imagine Morphia, Kirby Roseanne's um, colouring book. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm working with some very pale pastel colours because I'm really enjoying playing with these. But instead of leaving them as a pastel so that they're um, you can erase them and they're not set. I'm setting them with water, with a little water brush, bearing in mind that this again is just paper. So what I'm using is the pastel pencil from Derwent. And I thought I'd quite like to do some of these clouds, these, these kind of swirly clouds, because they always have trouble with these. So I'm just using the tiniest scratch of colour two reasons. One is you create dust if you kind of scribble um, and two is I'm a tight Yorkshire lass so I, I end up that my pencils are going to last me a long time. Now you can blow and nothing's moved so that's quite good and apologies for the sound. Uh, I have a new um, headset which is better but I'm full of cold so it's a bit croaky. So I'm still going to blend with the blender because although I don't want to use a lot of water and I do like the the um I do like what happens with the blender you have the most smoothest beautiful tones um without any lines and I just love smushing with this little blending tool which is quite a hard it's it's like a, an eraser. It's just slightly softer than a, an eraser. Sorry, that's the cat. And again, you see, because this has got some marking on it here, I can still keep going right to that end. So that's given me very quickly, uh, and that's actually different to this, different colour. So I've got my trusted little pot, and it does have some dried gesso in it, but it's not going anywhere. And then I have my trusted baby wipe, clean, damp baby wipe. But I am taking a lot of water off. I really do not want this to be wet. And then all I'm doing is just stroking the page. And I can only touch it once because it's pastel and it will move. So you want to go palest first, then over the dark area. Then palest and then over the dark area. And what you're trying to do is skim over the top of what basically is a stain. You've stained that. So if you look at the difference, this one I put the colour down and then I, I used a brush, a damp brush and I did it all in one and it's lovely but if you look at the subtle differences of that one it's completely different so you just get the edge if you use both tools so you instead of smudging with the brush like you do with the Derwent watercolour pencils and you do with the ink tens what you do is you can blend these pastels with a blender or a shaper this is called a colour shaper so it's not as soft it's quite a, a firm taper point and I like that because you've got a lot of control so you've blended with that and then just stroke the top and what that's done is it's made that pastel that was blended into a lovely dry fixed pastel pencil colour and I really like working like that do it excuse me <clears throat> So again, I'm going to use, and I'm using um, the indigo, which again I've used for the Harry Potter, um, the Harry Potter Hagrid's um, cottage at, for the dark forest, and I love this colour. It's not a black; it's a dark blue, but it's it's a grey blue, a blue grey, and it's very dark and it's very very strong because it has a B for bold for this one. So again, just a little bit of a, a touch, not very much at all. So as a tight Yorkshire lass, a little bit goes a long way. And then take the blending tool. And again, I've blown absolutely nothing's moved. So I like that. That means that every scrap of pastel 
that is in my pencil is actually going to go on my page and not be blown into dust to make me cough and to go down the drain because it's a tight Yorkshire lass I like every scrap so what I've done there is I've I've kept my darker areas and I've gone round the others and I'm sorry for the thumb in the way but it's not behaving itself but I actually think I might want a little bit of a highlight just on that one to make it in front of that one so I can take my magic um, electric I don't know why they call it electric because it's not plugged in but it's called an electric eraser and it sounds a bit like a bumblebee stuck in a spider's web and if you can pull the end out here it's got like a bit of a grippy so if you turn it round you get a beautiful sharp edge and obviously you can only do that twice when you first put them in and when you've got the other and it pops back in now I've probably got a bit too much out there but what I want to show you is I want the highlight I've actually watercolored that one so that one shouldn't move a but here, there, that highlight, because it's not fixed yet. If I rub my finger across there, it would smudge. It's not fixed. So I can put as many highlights as I want on here. And then I usually use a little fluffy brush. And this is a beautiful sable Windsor and Newton brush, uh, but it won't be used really for watercolour, I don't think. So again, just very carefully, because again, that's not fixed, that's just rubbed pastel, that's blended pastel, so it's not fixed, it's not set, it can move. But if you take a very, very dry rigger and gently stroke, got to remember where you're going and you can just see the very faintest of a wet shine as it dries but instantly it's dried that's just how damp you need to be and then you can actually do this in a bible page it will not lift or buckle your page at all and that's done that's now fixed and it has gone slightly darker because pure pastelists do not ever fix their work because they strive to get the best colour um, and to play with the colour these are nearest the best thing you can get to pure pigment because there's hardly anything added to it so pure pastelists will never ever fix with anything because as soon as you fix it even with the tiniest amount of water that has now become a watercolour but it's dried but it's gone darker and now I can live with that it's a colour book um, but what that means is that's not going to smudge and it's fixed and you can work your way across the book like this again it's a really quick easy uh, non not too messy there's hardly any dust you're not scribbling with the pencil you're just stroking very carefully a tiny amount of color just so your colors go a long way and again it's a tight Yorkshire lass I like that <clears throat> if you want it deeper you can just stroke that little bit more but if you want a blended effect especially for these clouds then that's what you're going to have so have you got any questions and I'm sorry I've got glasses on and the glasses have wrapped round oh thank you King God yeah the glasses have wrapped <laughs> have kind of knotted round and then I've got a, a laptop kind of over there and I've got a laptop over there and I've got a screen there <laughs> it's all very technical for me I'm, I'm a wooden laptop girl normally but um, I've had a bit of a change round And I've lost my lovely strip lighting from my technical drawing um, table. So I'm a bit cross about that, but um, my room is just not big enough. I really could do with, if my desk was here, that I am now, I'd like my other desk to be facing this way. 
so that my strip lights here and I can kind of tilt it so that it would light up the whole of my desk and then you would have a flat white light but I just cannot get the table behind so I'm going to play behind here now that looks to be a lighter one you see this is where I get a bit like hoo -hoo, because there's one going that way one going that way and there's one going that way and then there's another one so I'm going to take this one here and finish it off and then that might sort out behind I love these Kirby Rosans and again no pressure on your finger you just stroking or just scratching very carefully you're just stroking that um, and I'm going to take that one over there I think so I'm going to do that one first <clears throat> and then the other one I can actually make darker so I've blown absolutely nothing's moved every scrap of color that came off that pencil is hanging on for grim life to this so again this is very pale because there's three clouds here so you've got to think about and all we're doing is staining because this is just a, an ordinary piece of paper we are staining this color but because it's almost pure pigment it's staining a lovely stain on this paper and then what we do is we take that stain and we just add a touch of water and that gives it No, I've done that one behind there. For that, this is the actual first one on top. <coughs> so again, because this is high highlighted, I'm going to put a highlight on these. And again, I'm going to use, especially now I've got this gorgeous sharp edge here. Oh, hi, hi, Kangaroo Babe. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Now, if you want me to zoom in, so you can see it a bit better, but can just touch a little bit and we can just create I'm going to have to pull that out actually and push that in a bit more because it's just got no control that's better they're very easy to use these even I can use them so that's quite good so if I just and remember that this isn't still not set yet it's still it's still a pastel just get rid of the eraser and then <clears throat> because the brush is almost dry when you use it it will never be wet enough to use again you've always got to wet it because it's almost instantly dried the minute you touch it so again just start with the palest and you can just see the lightest amount of white clear just appearing and that means that you just you're almost you're kind of almost varnishing it with water and that's all you need you don't need to go over it again if you can just see that you've touched it all with a damp brush and wait a, wait a moment but I can't do anything because I've actually put some behind there so I'm going to carry on with this one so there is there's a shadow there but there's nothing there if that makes sense no, I don't know if that's a mistake or, um, and I don't know what those tails are. But there's another bit of. So if we make all that quite dark, that's all we can do. We can just kind of play with what we've got. I don't know what that is. That's not part of whatever. So we might have to leave that. <coughs> Oops. So again just smudging that across and I, and I do like this because it's a nice blender although it was not going to get into those little corners very well and then this one can be a little bit darker because it's behind it any reason to blow on that and then just a damp brush 
and just pale this first and you you're not blending because we don't want to blend you're not mixing a watercolor because we've already blended it you're just fixing it it just wants the lightest touch of a damp brush so I can have a mouthful of tea has anybody got any you want me to zoom in a little bit that would be okay we'll do <clears throat> I really like, I, I did the first one, blended it with the brush and then I decided that it's just not as nice as if you blend it otherwise. So we've got to just, whoops, uh, I've got a problem with my, my other laptop so we have to be a little bit careful because lots of things start to happen. Right, so if I go to that one, and the touch isn't working either, so that's just not... Oops, no, it's gone. <laughs> right, so I need to just... I'm not sure about, about focusing though, so we'll just have to... After the twentieth time of trying to get it to move about four millimeters, oopsie, it's gone over it. You see, I'm pretty sure it's the mouse, but then of course it's right in the way, so I can't actually see. <laughs> so I'll have to wait for the other one to kind of <clears throat> let me see what's happening. So does that look like we're in focus? Because I can't really play with the focus. Is that? I'm going to be doing that one next here, so I want to be about there, don't I? Do we think that might be okay? I mean, the colours are very, very pale, but I do like them. So I'll leave that as it is, because I don't, <laughs> don't touch it. And excuse the slurp. So I thought if I used some some brighter colours, they would pop out quite nicely. <clears throat> so again, I think this is another little kind of behind there is another little world. And it means I can get some quite nice highlights on these little creatures. Normally they're kind of all flat faced. Well now I can have I can give them a bit of shape now. So this one is actually ahead of that one, so I'm gonna just put the tiniest and thumbs always in the way, sorry. I just need to be that little bit a little bit darker there so we can show that that one's in in front of it and maybe just a little bit you really do not need very much <clears throat> and then because I've got kind of this smudge on here I can actually take that and use it for the palest section and I don't even have to use anything um, and that looks like it's kind of a tail and, and that looks that's a gap I think that's a tail up there as well. So again, I can just use the bit of smudge that I've got on here. Because of course there's no... 
there's no shading effect. If there's no shading, you don't. You just want the palest. Uh, so it's all been done for you. So I'm actually going to fix what I've just done before I forget. So um, I don't. I think we fixed. Did we fix this bit here? I'm not sure if we fixed it. That's the only thing you've got to remember is remember to fix what you've just done. So I'll leave that for a moment. <coughs> so it's all set now, is that? And I can put that underneath and then it's not going to cause me a lot of... I like the fact it's all set <coughs> and so we have another one here so I'm just going to I've got one just on the end there so I'm going to just get rid of this one there oh, trouble now trouble <laughs> so again when I blow there's hardly anything coming off which is always nice and then you really should be using it like this so you've got a nice squidgy point but you know it's it's a collar book and if I go over it oh shush pussycat and then I can use the um, my electric eraser to just get a highlight on that top corner and there if I wanted I don't know why the pussycat's done this. What? Trouble. We have a pussycat. <laughs> we have a pussycat. We have a pussycat that wants to play. Don't you, Toffee? You want to play? Yes, I don't think so. You've already had your paws in paint, haven't you? Hmm? Yes. Uh, can you go sit down and go somewhere else? Because Alf Alfie's going to be jumping about in a minute and there'll be trouble. Alfie's been a good boy. <laughs> For a change. Um, I sharpened them. I haven't sharpened them yet, even though I've sharpened one or two because they were broken. Because my daughter used them, um, but I haven't. I haven't needed to sharpen them. But I've bought a um, a, a Derwent guard. So I think I left it out, didn't I? Yes, I got it out. So what you do is there is one that needs sharpening, so I'll sharpen that. I would not put these in a pencil sharpener. If you go on the website, it does tell you. Cause I've been using this one for the Harry Potter a lot for the Harry Potter one. If you go on the website, they show you how to do it. So, as a tight Yorkshire lass, this is my sooty, the other pussy cat. So this has got a rubber kind of two little strips on it so it doesn't move about. And that goes on the top and then you use a blade, either a scalpel blade and this is a quite a new eraser so it's not got a nice thing in the middle. You've got to be a bit careful. So I hope I'm in there. So what I do is I take that line as where to start. So about where I think the top is here, I'll slide, and it's literally at that angle. It's I'm sliding, I'm sliding. I'm not digging. I'm sliding the top like this. If you dig, you'll just go straight through. You want to just just slide. Let's see if I can show you sideways. So you're just slicing off. 
But if you do this and le just lean your blade across, these are rounded so you can twist them as you go. So what I do is I take quite a lot of wood off. And I would do this with the ink tens, the Derwent, any pencil that's water based. This is what I would do. I hope everybody can see that. Am I in frame? And because my thumb is on this, if that slips, it's going somewhere else. It's not going anywhere near me. Never ever do it like this because you will end up not even in hospital. These are very sharp blades. I'm only doing this, I would do it on a mat, but I'm doing this because I want to, I don't want to make a mess. But I would not do it on a piece of paper, I would do it on a mat, that's why you've got the rubber suction. So this can't slide and this can't slide. And the gentler you are, the better your pencil will be. I mean, these are really, really fine slithers. And I've got poorly hands, but you can just, and it doesn't matter if you, the Stanley knife would be the best because it's a nice big blade it's, and you can take the blade away and nobody can find it. It's on a big heavy button and there's blades in the handle and I like my Stanley knife, I can't find it. But I have been using these for a long time. Now this isn't probably the best colour to show you. But that's the stick of pencil, of pastel that's now appeared. And I don't want to sharpen that. I'm just taking the wood off. And I take the wood off you don't want too much because you've got to protect it. It's a soft pastel. Um, but mine are in this case, so mine are going to be protected anyway. They're not going to be kicking about a pencil case or a tray or a tin. So what I've done, a bit like an eyebrow pencil, you take off quite a lot. I do the same with the eyebrow pencil. And then I used to use my, my tongue to kind of mould the eye so it's not sharp. That's how I used to do an eyebrow pencil. Um, because you do not, I never sharpen eyebrow pen, uh, eyeline, eyeliner pencil, sorry, with um, with a pencil sharpener because it's never enough. You end up with a piece of wood in your eye. So if I take all that off now, you can see. There's a tiny bit there that I've missed. Look, now this is because I've been using one of these for about 30 odd years more. I can do this. I can take that wood off. So I have now, all that is pure pastel. And if you look, there is actually a sharp ridge on there. I don't need to, I don't need to make that a point. I do not need to make that a point. If I did, I would be sh I would be shaving that into a well so that I could add a drop of water and make it into a colour. It would be a watercolour. It would dry and then it would be reconstituted back into a watercolour. I then put that onto here and I don't press down. I only press down with my hands out the way because if it's going to go anywhere, it's not going to touch my hands. If you're going to use one of these, you've got to learn to use them with extreme caution. And then you take your little thing, and all I've wasted is wood. There's not a scrap of pastel on there at all. It's all wood. And I don't know where my bin is. <laughs> I don't know where my bin is. Oh, it's there. Come back, Sutty. All is forgiven. So that's how I sharpen that. That probably wasn't the best one to show you. But that's the only one and I've been using these about three weeks. And again, that's what I love. It's pure colour. All this is pure colour so you don't need very much. Um, there's um, a, fren a fresh green. That's another one. I'll, I'll sharpen that one. You can see again how to do it. And I've sharpened the vanilla one. But apart from that, I haven't sharpened them. And I've used them for about three, three or four weeks now. 
So again, um, push that onto there, very carefully take this away, tease it out gently. And if it does fly, it's flying over there. Your hand's here, it's flying over there. Unless, of course, you've got somebody sitting opposite you and then you don't do that. Um, I've got my glasses on, so I'll be with you in a second. Let's see what you're saying then. It's called um, oh, I said hi to everybody. It's called a pencil sharpening guard. And it guards and what the Derwent actually have it with a with a with an with a blade as well. They come with a little blades and a knife. But you don't need to, you can have a Stanley knife for about three or four pounds. Stanley knives are very good as long as you keep the blades uh, replace them so again I start here about here roughly so I'm in line with this but again I'm actually sliding it just you could you do that when you're doing your your work but you're sliding just very carefully almost um, not perpendicular I've forgotten the word but almost level somebody tell me the word um, just the slightest little bit of pressure so I'm not touching the end at all I'm just taking off the wood and I don't think I've sharpened um, things for years if you do it like that because you're not wasting it you know but it depends on if, what you use it for I mean these wouldn't be any good if you wanted to do a, a, a five foot by five foot watercolor um, you could do that but it would be pointless these are designed you would use big pastels for that and then you would use these just for fine detail that's what they're designed for the design that you would use your pastels your big finger finger chunky pastels for your your, your backgrounds and for your main three shades and then when you get to the point of detail you bring in your pencils your pastel pencils but I think they are perfect for coloring in and seeing as I found you can actually um, well I, I knew you could do it but I'd forgotten because I've got short-term memory loss um, you can fix them as you go as well which is quite nice and you don't have to use fixative or a hair or hair spray um, now, as a student, even even at university, we didn't buy fixative. We used hairspray. So if it's good enough for uni and a degree, it's good enough for a colour book. So again, I will leave that because I've got quite a sharp edge on there. There's quite a, you know, if I wanted a very fine line, that's quite a fine line. You know, if I did that with a, sh especially with pastels, if I point made that into a point and I did that, within the space of doing that, it would be blunt again. Whereas this, I can go all the way around and do lots, and I've not wasted anything. But if you insisted, what you would then do is you would then again just scrape. And you keep scraping and turning until you taper the point. And you keep going to the guard and you keep turning round. And then if you kept the colour and dampened that, it would make a watercolour. And these, of course, would make beautiful watercolours. So I'm going to pop that back into there. <clears throat> so I haven't touched that strip at all. If you took a pencil sharpener and twisted that would totally disintegrate and it would snap somewhere down here so you'd sharpen it again and it snaps somewhere down here and you just keep snapping it until you end up with no pencil so have a look on the website because the Derwent website shows you the lady shows you how to do it she doesn't tell you to keep the pastel like I do but then I'm a tight Yorkshire lass just bear with me I've just slurp of coffee tea and put my glasses on has anybody got any questions? Hi Suzanne, welcome to Bunny's Designs. 
Did you find it, um, kangaroo babe? And I knew I'd bought one years ago. <laughs> See, you've got to be really careful. Now, I can't cut myself because I'm not pushing down on this. When I push down, I jiggle it gently because if that snaps, it will fly. So the other thing I would say is always wear glasses if you're using one of those. If not, a Stanley knife blade is brilliant because you can flick the blade in and, it's, and children can be poking about with it and they're not going to hurt themselves. And the spare blades in. And they're about five or six pounds. And I have a wonderful or bright orange one I bought in Ireland and I can't find it. So when I go to Ireland, I'll be buying another one. I think they're about three or four euros. But a Stanley knife with with the sharp blades is perfect. That's what we used um, we used at college. And we use the scalpel blades as well, but we use those as well. Because there's never any guards for these. The proper Stanley, um, the proper, um, I've forgotten the word of them now, what are they called? Scalpel blades, there is no blade, uh, no blade cover. I've never found one yet. So the Stanley knife is the best alternative. And you can use it for other things. And it's stronger, so it's not going to snap. <laughs> yes, they're a bit expensive. I think it, my hours are about three or four pounds. Three or four pounds, I think. But if you buy the blades and the cutter, it's more expensive. I would just buy this and a scalpel blade. That's what I would buy. But that's my yellow ochre, so we'll just see just how long it takes me to use all that now. <clears throat> yes, sandy lives are a lot safer. And with a new blade, it's perfect. Perfect for sharpening pencils. So that's all set. So again, I'm just going to go around this little bit here. Just make sure I'm in frame. <coughs> Excuse me. Standing lives. Standing knives are the, are the chunky ones. They're about as chunky as this. And you push a button down. When you open it, there's a, there's a button on it. And the blades have got two little holes. And you can put them in the holes. And so the, the, the two little clips hold the standing knife in half of the pen. And then you've got a big screw holding it together. And at the back, you've got spare blades. But at the front, when you push, would put the cover on and screw it together, you then have a button and you push the button and the blade comes out and it locks so you can use it and then when you push the button and retract the blade kids can push the fingers on the end and there's nothing to cut themselves it's a chunky piece of metal and it takes an awful lot to bounce it about to get that to move it will not let that blade out so it's perfect if you've got children I can't decide if I'm eating dog folk, dog hairs. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. You don't really need scalpel blades. I used it for, we had to do precision cutting. I can't even say that today. Precision cutting, and if that, you do for that. But if you don't need it for that, a standard knife is perfectly okay. And I certainly wouldn't buy blade. I've got hundreds of blades. Um, my children probably will die before they use all their blades I've got. <laughs> my grandchildren probably will. Yeah, I have about 50 blades and then I've got six different, you can get curled ones, straight ones, bent ones, short ones, long ones. 11, and I had to buy 10 and 11 of these. I think 11 is the very long one and 10 is the short one. And then I like the 9, that's the curved one, that's quite nice. 
Um, I've got every shape. <laughs> There's hundreds of different ones. Um, but yeah, you don't need. I've got. I found about five when I've been hunting about. You really do not need a Stanley knife, and then you just buy the sets of. Uh, and they're all kind of universal, so you just buy a set of universal Stanley blades. The only thing to do is not to use a blunt Stanley knife blade because you'll cut yourself. I don't like the snap blades because even though I've got glasses on, I've had scalpel blades fly in my ha hair and uh, really don't like them. I don't like the snap blades at all. I'm not very good with them. I'm not very good at snapping these in. We used to shove these on here on the corner of the desk at college. That's how we were taught to put them in, but they fly. So I really don't like them. And I make my daughter, one of my daughters wears glasses, so I make her put her glasses on when she's using them. The other one, I make her wear safety glasses. They are that dangerous. They really are. Um, it's just I have, you know, I have been using them a long time. But it's like everything, you know, if you follow the safety, you should be fine. If you start faffing about and being complacent, then, you know, that's when things happen. But, you know, they're not used for cutting people open for nothing. They are extremely precise cutting knives for obvious reasons. That's the lecture, health <laughs> and safety lecture. <laughs> health and safety for today, but you've got to be careful. But it's like everything, you know. You can cut yourself on your on your kitchen scissors if you're not. Or you can cut yourself on a piece of paper that you know if you're not careful. Everything's. You've got to think health and safety, even when you when you sharpening your pencils, but. Make sure that this is away now. Now, I could even cut myself on here. Um, so I've got to be really careful. When I put my hand in my pencil um, pocket in the art bag, I'm actually thinking about putting something else on here because I don't like this. It's just the fact I didn't want to ruin a nice rubber uh, eraser. So that's why I put it on there. So what I could do is take that off and make that go corner to corner and then it would actually fit the whole thing on. Uh, because I'm not 100% happy with that. Um, but I do make sure I can see where the handle is and where the blade is before I put my hand in. Even though I've used one for all these years, I just know. I, I've, I've poked myself a couple of times with them, but I've never actually. I tell a lie, I have. I've sliced myself a couple of times. But the only good thing about them is if you slice your finger, if you shut it and tight it, hold it tight it will knit almost instantly <laughs> but as I say you don't want to go there you do not want to go there so I want to make that and I haven't um, I just can't see I really want that light there and then maybe just a little bit on there and that's the beauty of doing it this way. Oh my hand! Is that you can put a highlight where you want it before you put the water brush, so you can have some nice highlights. And you can go back in and put some more low lights in if you want and shadows. But I actually quite I don't want to go much darker. Now that looks a little bit greyer than that because all this is set and that's now still rough. So I can't smush it because it will. I'm going to go in a little bit darker actually because it is underneath that. I do actually quite like that, just that little bit. And then if I don't touch those highlights, they, that they should pop out. Just throw a bit too thick. <coughs> Put my glasses on. Yes, a ceramic knife. I would think, yeah, the best one is the Stanley because they are very, very sharp. We used to, we used to do our cardboard, our mount boards with those. Um, and we, we had to learn how to kind of cut 
framing pictures at an angle, which is not not an easy thing. Now I think they have tapering, all sorts of things now. So we we, you know, we had to do it in those days, but now you don't. So that's quite nice. I mean, it used to take us a week to do one word, and it had to be p perfect to go to the printers. And there were some blue words in the in the room if you uh, got to the last letter and you dropped your ink pen on it. <laughs> your precision pen, because you had another week to do the whole word again. It was, you know, our our work went to printers. That's how precise it had to be. <clears throat> this is why I can't be free and easy with my artwork. <laughs> Everything's got to be just little bits. So I'm moving round. Um, so that looks a slightly different colour. So I'm hopefully, when I go back in with my little damp brush, it should become the same colour. And you don't really want to smush too much because you're going to lose that natural highlight that we've just used. So there is basically hardly anything on there at all. Oh, here we go again. Always hungry. <laughs> so I'll give that a minute to dry. So I'm thinking I might have to have quite a bright balloon there, I think. <laughs> toffee. <laughs> toffee, toffee, toffee. If I just see I'm still in frame, just tell me if I'm not in frame because I, I can't see the um, screen. <laughs> so it's almost dried, is that? And it's set. So all that that I've just done is all set. And I mean, the pencil looks like it did. So that was a little bit pale, that one. I think I want a bit brighter one. So in this set, there's some quite nice oranges. There's orange earth. Um, oops, I bought some, uh, and there's some. Uh, there's there's brown ochre, and then I've got a burnt ochre. Um, <laughs> sorry, somebody's snoring down there. Yes, we have big snores. Um, some nice. Uh, geranium Lake. I always like Geranium Lake, so let's have a look. Oops, let me just make sure I'm in I think I am. I'm going to just... What are you doing? Toffee! When she's hungry she eats plastic. She's potty. So again, I'm just going to put a little bit of that on there. Balloon. So that's Geranium Lake D, and then I've got a, um, a Crimson Lake um, F. But I like the, um, I think I like the Spectrum Blue. But these, again, these are very pale because this is a different set. I'm trying to get hold of the darker ones because I love this colour. I really like these colours. I think that was Crimson Lake, wasn't it? This is Geranium Lake. Yeah, Geranium Lake is slightly darker, but only slightly, so it should be fine. And then, again, I've got to make sure I take all that grey off there. Oh, thanks for stopping by. I'll just see what time we're on. Um, yeah, another 10 minutes or so. Thank you very much. So thanks for watching. Thanks for popping in. Just going to finish my um, little balloon. Again, just smushing in a little bit. 
So hopefully I can sort out my I think and I like I like that little sand colour I had. Um it was I think it was brown brown ochre. I think I like that colour for the sandbags. <coughs> I like the sand colour and I think the burnt sienna would be the basket as well. I kind of like those colours. So we can um, just make sure there's no colour on there and just kind of smush those round. Just, uh, oopsie, sorry, could be a bark alert. Oopsie. So I'm just, I don't understand what that's for, so I'm just going to just carefully stroke all over there because it's the same tone don't have to worry I'm just literally stroking that I'll have to yes it's the thing is so thank you for watching and that's the end of part two and I'm not sure if I can stop the video <laughs> before he starts to bark so if anybody's got ear here's here's